The best under 18 players from around the world have been turning heads all week long at the Halinka Gretzky Cup. For over 25 years, this tournament has been the launching pad for past, present, and future NHL superstars. And now the next generation takes to the ice representing their country and to honor the tradition of two of the game's greatest legacies. We are down to the final four. The semifinals at the 2018 Halinka Gretzky Cup are next. Scorcher of a day in sunny Edmonton. Going to be a great day of hockey. Team Sweden taking on Team Russia at the 2018 Halinka Gretzky Cup. And this afternoon's matchup will be a meeting of the tournament's top two goal scorers, Vasily Podkols in Russia, potential first round pick in the upcoming NHL entry draft. A couple of goals against the USA Thursday has four on the tournament. Meanwhile, Lucas Raymond for Team Sweden playing in his first major international event has been so good, also with four goals. He's not eligible until the the 2020 draft. Welcome inside, everybody. I'm Ryan Rashog. Thanks for tuning in to TSN's presentation of the Halinka Gretzky Cup. Both these teams should be feeling pretty good about themselves heading into the semifinals. The Swedes had a real close game against Canada heading in, while the Russians, they laid a pretty good beating on the United States. Let's go to action from Red Deer on Wednesday. Russia went up 3-0 in the first. The United States would come back to tie it, but then Vasily put goals in, who we just mentioned, would score the 4-3 goal, and the floodgates would open for Russia. How about an 8-3 final? score the high-powered offensive Russians moving on to the semifinals meantime Canada taking on Sweden in the third period game tied up at two Matthew Roberts in the local product from Sherwood Park Alberta the defenseman swooping down from the blue line goes top shelf nice goal there 3-2 Canada would lead and Elmer Soderblom on the power play would tie the game up at three and we were in for a photo finish. And that is when Bowen Byram gets the puck at the blue line, floats one in and it would find the back of the net through traffic. A huge goal as Canada gets past Sweden to take top spot in group A, four to three, the final score. And that sets up two excellent games that we have for you. Both of them will be on the network here today, this afternoon, of course, it's going to be Sweden versus Russia. And then later on tonight, the United States and Canada, a berth in the final is on the line. Time to head over to the broadcast booth and join the men with the call, Gord Miller and Craig Button. And Craig, there is no shortage of high-end offense in this game. You've got players like Vasily Pakosin for the Russians who have scored in every game so far. Yeah, well, and he's a really good player. He's he's a competitor. He uses his body. He gets into the hard areas. He's really smart. Kills penalties, but he's always probing for those opportunities and where he can break down defenses. Highly competitive. I know the Russian factor continues to a certain extent in the NHL draft, but I can tell you this. Don't be passing up this young man. He is a player that can make a difference in a lot of areas of the game and they don't come along very often so you can look at the birth certificate just watch the player because he's a really good one that has a chance to be a, in my view a first round pick in the National Hockey League draft this coming June 2019. So the Russians rolled through the preliminary round of this tournament. Put Colson plays on the right side on the second line. They're down a forward due to injury. And we'll see Yaroslav Askarov in goal for Russia. Meantime, for the Swedes, lots of offense as well. This is a team led up front and on the back end with lots of high-end guys. Well, I mean, Lucas Raymond. I mean, he's a 2002 born, not eligible until the 2020 NHL draft. He has been the Swedes' best player. He's dangerous when he's on the ice. He has the puck. He makes things happen. Happen, kills penalties, he's on the power play, and along with Alexander Holtz, those two youngsters are terrific. And then you have Philip Broberg, outstanding skater. And when you start to project to the NHL, you see a big man who can skate like that, who can make plays with the puck, he ain't gonna last very long in the 2019 draft. He's going early. So the top line for the Swedes has Carl Henriksson, the 17-year-old centering two 16-year-olds, Lucas Raymond and Alexander Holtz, who have both been dynamic, and Broberg takes a lot of time up on the back end. Look for the Swedes to play that top line a ton. <laughs> they give them about 20 minutes of ice time per game, Ryan. 
All right, gentlemen, we are just about ready to go. Team Russia, Team Sweden. The Russians haven't won a gold since 1995. They'd love to change that. Meantime, Sweden finished third last year, a win this afternoon, and they are guaranteed to improve on that. It's going to be a great game. Semi-final Friday here at the 2018 Halinka Gretzky Cup. The 2018 Halinka Gretzky Cup from Edmonton and Red Deer, Alberta is brought to you by Esso. The Esso brand has fueled Canada's love of hockey for over 30 years. By Nike, official gear of Canada's national hockey team. And by TELUS. Stand with TELUS to bring good sportsmanship online. Together, we can end bullying. Welcome back to Edmonton, the semifinal Friday at the 2018 Halinka Gretzky Cup. Russia opens up against Sweden. Yaroslav Askarov, a 16-year-old, born in 2002, will start in goal for the Russians of the 944 save percentage in the tournament, allowed three goals on 19 shots against the United States. And meantime, for the Swedes, It'll be Hugo Alphanet, who has played only once, a 15 save shutout against Switzerland in their second game. He's eligible for the 2019 draft. Magnus Havila, the brother of Nicholas Havila, the Stanley Cup champion and Olympic gold medalist for the Swedes, is a fiery presence behind their bench. And for the Russians, Vladimir Filatov is the head coach of the team that went 3-0 through the tournament. A crazy last round Robin game against the United States. Up 3-0, tied 3-3, win at 8-3. Yeah, and they were dominating in the game. They were up 3-0 after the first period. Was, the shots were 21-3. And then the U.S. found a way to get back into the game and tie it up, but then the Russians took it over, really dominating throughout. Russia, the home team, has the last change. Historically, Russian coaches have not taken much advantage of last change. They don't match lines very much. And there's an icing call against Russia. We've seen some rule tweaks at this tournament. And one of them is that if you knock the net off intentionally or not, you can't change afterwards. And another is that once you're awarded a power play for the first face-off in the offensive zone, you can choose which side of the ice you want the draw to be on. Talking to Glenn Gullitson, now an assistant coach with Edmondson and former head coach in Calgary and Dallas, he was saying that's a huge advantage for the team on the power play because on their offside, centers are about 10% worse than on their strong side. Well, how about if you're the Calgary Flames last year with Glenn Gullitson coaching, they had no right shot centers. Right, they had all left shots. So if he had, if he had the chance to choose which side the faceoff was on, pretty easy choice for him. Yeah, and, and for any team that gets the power play, they're going right, they're putting that left side guy on the right faceoff dot, right? In the defensive zone. Max Walgren works it now. Max and Joel Walgren, twins for Sweden. And now it's brought back the other way by Nikolaev. Walks right in, Nikolaev poke check there by Albert Lukasen. That's gonna be a penalty against the Swedes. The puck back at the point, they shot fired there by Ilya Moronov, but the first penalty of the game will go to Sweden, a hooking call against Albert Lukasen. Just a minute, nine seconds in. And so now the Russians will get to choose which side they want the face off on. And Nikolayov really sets up Lukasen. The move at the blue line, he shifts a little bit outside, then moves it inside. Lukasen is flat-footed and ends up getting a penalty. So the way it works, Craig, is you tell them which side you want the draw on, and then the defending team can put their players out, and then you can change. So the Russians go to the power play. They're 5 for 16 through three games in the tournament. It has been lethal. Brought it out by Roman Bichkov, and Bichkov was poke checked. The puck back to center ice. Dmitry Tavulin set that ahead, and in comes Daniel Gushin. And the play called offside at the Swedish line. So the Russians open with an impressive win over Finland, 7-2. But they have had the lead for all but 12 minutes, either tied or leading for all but 12 minutes in the tournament. Outscored the opposition 18-5. And the scoring has really spread throughout their lineup. So this tournament is open to players born in 2001 or later which means we'll likely see a number of these players at the 2021 World Junior Tournament and not before, if you go by the way the Russians have done things in the past. They take 19-year-olds to the World Junior. Yeah, it's a 19-year-old it's a tournament for the most part for the Russians, and with Valeri Bragan coaching that team for a long time, 
He doesn't waver. Well, this team is almost entirely made up of 17-year-olds, the maximum age in the tournament. Grutza plays it back at the point. Nikita seat up a long shot, and the save is made by Alnefeld. So Jesper Wallstead started two games for the Swedes in the opening round. Gave up four on 35 against Canada, so they go back to Alnefeld for this medal round game. Nice little entry into the zone by Spiridonov, and then they work it up high, but a rather easy save. Nothing really to deal for, deal with for Granifel. So Broberg out there on the penalty kill, fires it around. Philip Broberg, six foot two, 200 pounds already. As you said, an excellent skater. He scored twice so far in the tournament. And away comes Put Colson. The Senate Put Colson was scored in every game. Works on Albert Johansson. Slides it back at the point for Mironov. Back to Put Colson. The Russian captain. Back to Mironov. To Put Colson. And now Mironov unloads, shoots, and Almafelt makes the stop. <laughs> Again, they're getting some shots on the net, but not a lot to deal with if you're the goaltender. Anna felt seeing the putt pretty clearly, not having to deal with the potential of a tip. Nine seconds to go in the power play. And you always hear the expression behind the bench for a coach. No, no, no. With the Russians on the bench. They stand right on the player's bench. They have to get out of the coach's way. And sometimes with Roy Bragan, he'll stand on the boards and face his team to talk to them. But there are four coaches behind the Russian bench, and they all stand. Sorry, on the Russian bench, and they all stand on the player's bench. And it appears as though there are times when all four are talking at once. Right in the thick of the action. That long shot by Alexander Lundquist goes wide. Two shots for the Russians on that power play. Still no score here in the first period. Canada will play the United States tonight in the second semifinal. The winners face each other in the gold medal game tomorrow. Jam played the side of the goal prompt there by Sergei Alhamov. And Alhamov turned away by Almafel. Shots 2 0 in favor of the Russians. Thanks to that early power play. Daniel Gushin who scored twice and had two assists in that win against the United States. He's a 2002 born as well. Real good offensive player. Had a big year playing for the CSK Moscow under 17 team as an underage last year. Scoring 39 points in 22 games. He's going to Muskegon of the United States Hockey League next year. Brought in now by Lucas Raymond. Raymond walks in, holds, and a poke check there by Sidov. Worked out pretty good for Andrei Svechnikov. He went there as an underage, and then he went to the CHL. In comes Raymond. Shoots. That was blocked by Sidov. Nikita Sidov played last year for the Colorado Evolution in Denver. And is now going to the Regina Pats of the Western Hockey League. His teammate, Sergey Alamov, played with him in Denver and is also going to Regina. Why not bring the both of them in there? Well, it, it's funny you say that. It makes a lot of sense. It does. And, you know, you bring a player over from Europe. He doesn't speak the language. Doesn't have teammates to talk to. It amazes me in the NHL, Craig, that teams don't think of that more often with young players. Well, John Paddock's the general manager and head coach of Regina, and he was in Winnipeg. Mike Smith was the general manager. And they, they brought a lot of Russians over, you know, when it opened up. And so I think John has a, I don't think he's got a great feel for the importance of that. Now a steal by Gushin, walks in. Gushin pulls it back in. All the makes the stop point blank on him. And Raymond back the other way. Rink wide, he goes for Holtz. Alexander Holtz works in. And stripped to the puck by Roman Beachcock. You know, you take a case here in Edmondson with a Yesapuya Yarvi. His rookie year as an 18 year old, he had no Finns to talk to, spoke almost no English, trying to make the transition to the NHL, a new culture. And now icing called against the Swedes with five and a half gone here in the period. So Regina will have Sidov and Alamov next year. This is a turnover. Just a little play inside the blue line, and Lucas Raymond fans on it. And Gushin is right on it. He decides that I'm not going to make a pass. He decides that it's better going to the net. That's a good play by Anafelt to hold the. And Nikolayev now is going to get a penalty for the Russians. 
for the hook. And so the Swedes will get their first power play with 14.28 to go. There it is right on the hands. Nikolaev. Now the Russians will tell the linesman where they want the face off. Or the Swedes rather will tell them where they want the face off. They want it on the left hand side. And that's the strong side for the center Carl Henriksen. And historically, the Russians do not have a lot of right shot players no, through their lineup. The one year at the World Junior, they had all left-handed shots. So this is an advantage now. Put the left shot centerman on his weak side. Henriksen got tossed. Now, is this a penalty? It yeah, is it's a penalty. A penalty Raymond got tossed, and so now this is going to be a face-off violation against the Swedes, and the power play is over before it starts. Well, this is the second time this has happened to Lucas Raymond. Happened to him yeah, in, the, right. in, the, in the previous game. And Raymond looking on mystified, and the argument continues to be as Bjorn Ford is. Well, there's Henriksen. So he was being thrown out. Yeah. So now the, the linesman had already called it. He says, you're out. A so warning. So now, given. so now Raymond's got to get in there and he's got to be ready to go. Now what did he do there? Yeah, I don't know. That looked like it's almost like they were looking for him. Well, his feet weren't quite in the bracket, so that's calling it right by the book. Yeah. So four on four now. Well, that's disappointing for the Swedes. The Back at the point, Perrin off for the shot that was blocked by Bjorn Ford. So four on four here. You pick the side you want the face off in, you get two centers tossed out, you're done. <laughs> but here is Hendrickson with it. Carl Hendrickson, the 17 year old, plays in the Fulham organization. Centering those two 16 year olds. He's the grand old man out here at the age of 17. Alamon breaks in. You got to use the term veteran on these teams. With <laughs> that guy that's a year older is yeah. a veteran. Okay, he's born in January. Holtz puts that wide. And it's scooped up by Rodion Amarov. Amarov, who plays for Ufa, walks in, shoots. Not for everybody on the belt. A lot of these Russian players play on under 17 teams and will also play a little bit in their MHL, which is the junior league below the KHL. That was started by Vladislav Trechek a half a dozen years ago as an attempt to bolster junior hockey in Russia and offer another development avenue for their players. It's taken some time to grow it, but the MHL is catching on there. More and more Russians are staying there and playing in it. Most of these players will graduate to it next year. And that shot was blocked by Tivulin off the stick of Tobias Bjornport. Tivulin had that take a bite out of him. Yeah, the MHL, the Junior League, has become very competitive. There's been some teams that have, the KHL has been reduced in terms of the number of teams in the league, so that's helped the MHL as well. Postmeyer works in. Swings it back across, brought in by Johansson with a shot, and that was blocked by Nikita Vaschenko. So you would start at the under-17 level, move on to the MHL. There's the VHL, a little below the KHL, a pro league, and then the KHL itself. And with the and with lesser teams in the KHL, there's not a pressure for the teams that aren't as good to get their younger players that really aren't ready to play. So that makes the MHL that much more competitive. Now brought back in by Paul Bowles and walks in and shoots. And Alnafelt makes the stop. 12-16 to go here in the first period. 5-0 the shots on goal in favor of Russia. Still no score. Lucas Raymond got his second face-off violation of the tournament. Let's take a quick look here. After Hendrickson, you gotta be, you gotta come into the circle, yeah. and you gotta get yourself set, and his stick goes right into the face-off gun. So you're right, they did call it by the book, but there's where the violation occurred. They want you to get set on the tee, and then get your stick down in the white. When the IHF first brought in the crease violation, so if you stood in the crease, took position in the crease, they blow the whistle and throw you out, North American players were absolutely flummoxed by it. No, no, no! Been trained their whole lives to play one way. And we've seen the late hit call here in this competition and last week in Kamloops where so-called finishing your check, if you do it late, it's a penalty. There was a 
conference today. There's been a hockey conference going on all week, but talking to people from different levels of, of hockey about it. And how that's going to take a major adjustment by the players because you've been trained to finish your check, finish your check. Now, Mike Keenan famously said to a player on the bench, the American Hockey League is full of guys who don't finish their checks. Well, we've talked about this, Gord, but, like, you know, there was this evolution of finishing your check, and then it was like, you know, how long after you gave up the putt could you finish your check? And By the way, that's a fabulous beard on that Swedish oh, assistant yes, coach. Is. That is a big league beard. He looks like a guy that might have come across in a rowboat in the 12th century, the Swedish Viking. Oh, for sure. He might watch Duck Dynasty as well. Down. I always laugh when people talk about, you know, Swedes maybe not being as courageous as other players. They rowed across the ocean in open boats. Amarov comes in, shoots, it goes off a stick. I had lots of players that played in the oh. 70s tell me Gloria Salmi might have been the toughest player ever they played against. Tavulin plays it back for Beach Tom. His shot goes off a leg and wide. Put Colson back on it. Put Colson from St. Petersburg. Plays it under 17 team. Has four goals in three games in this tournament. The issue, as you talked about the Russian factor in the opening, Craig, is that players from Russia have the avenue to play in the KHL, so they quite often don't want to go to the American League, so signing them can be very difficult. What most teams have done is give the player the option, if you don't make our team out of camp, you can go back to Russia. Well, I think that, I think there's a perception that it's been tough, but there hasn't been any, there hasn't been very many, if any, Russians that haven't signed. The little teams have been burnt by it. I mean, I know there's lots of talk about of Denny Kuznetsov. He, he wanted to stay there and grow his game. He signed after a lawsuit. There was some legal. And you got Kirill Kaprizov as well, a Minnesota draft who's still in limbo in Russia. We're in limbo too. Six nothing the shots, no score. Back here in Edmonton, want to take a moment to send our thoughts to those in Fredericton, New Brunswick, affected by that horrible tragedy today. Thinking of you and sending you our thoughts and prayers in what is a horrible situation and with hopes that the healing can begin soon. Tobias Bjornfort brings it ahead now for the Swedes. The captain walks in across the line. But the play is offside. Just to continue the thought, Craig, about Russian players, you think about Vadim Shipachov, who goes to Vegas last year. He signed with the Golden Knights. Their only Russian player. He's in his late 20s. Had played the game one way his whole life. Comes to North America. He's expected to play a different style. we got to give the puck away quickly, get it back. Culturally different. Very difficult for him. It is, especially at that age, games. too, right? Like, yeah. Especially at that age. Bashchenko goes racing to it. In soccer, they talked about it for years, Craig, that there was a belief that Brazilians couldn't play in England. One of the reasons they had a hard time playing is they'd come over and the team would get them a real estate agent. That was it. Plays offside. No house with language or, you know, they speak Portuguese. They're in, they're in London. I remember during the lockout in 94, 95, the NHL. Oh, it's Jeff Sanderson was going over to Europe, and we were going over, and we had drafted a player by the name of Yarko Varvio, who was playing in Havelina. And so we got we got Jeff connected with, because that's where he was going to play. We got Jeff connected with Yarko. I remember running into Jeff after the league had started up about March that year, and he said, I have no idea. He goes, I have a new appreciation for what the Europeans go through. Sure. And that's just 100 kilometers north of Helsinki. So there wasn't English. Tankadia's in, plays it back to center. Spiridonov comes in. Igor Spiridonov drops it off, and that shot lifted wide by Gritsa. Maybe the best move a team ever made was Pittsburgh getting Yuri Herdina, the veteran, to play with the young Yarmir Yager in the early 90s. And, and Yuri, who was uh, won a Stanley Cup with the Pittsburgh Penguins and was a very much revered player in Czech Republic. Alexander Holtz fires that wide, the top line back on the ice for the Swedes. Eight and a half to go here in a scoreless first period. Sweden still on a shot on goal in this first period. 
11 and a half minutes in. We'd heard from scouts that had been down to Redmond that this Russian team was very good. As Gushin works in, Daniel Gushin. Tied up in the corner by Alexander Lundquist, who you mentioned is a nephew of Nick Lidstrom, the legendary Detroit Red Wing. Now Raymond tries to work it free. This line, this top line for the Swedes, has spent a lot of time in its own zone. That's been a difference that we've seen in the first three games where they've been on the attack much of the time. The Russians are... Uh... And when they play as, as a unit, and they play very well as a unit, they make it very difficult to generate much against them. There are times when you watch them that they seem almost indistinguishable from one another. They come at you in waves. You'll see a couple of guys that stand out because of the skill, but the way they play, so similar. Here's uh, Leah Chomp, had that shot blocked, and brought up by Bjorn Ford. Norfolk slides that down. And back at center right it goes and swinging back to pick it up is Broberg. Top five for you in the draft, Craig? He very well could be, Gord. He very well could be. I mean, I, you, you watch him play and you just, it, it just. Great defensive play there to knock it away. Screams NHL long. player, front line. Here he is with it now. Loves to take off with the puck. Lifts that down. He's the first man in the four check. Skipping puck. And the goaltender, Askarov, hangs on to it. There's a pretty good chance, but Bjornfoot gets right into good position. Ouch. Yeah, that looks like it got him in a good part of the pant. we got referee cameras here. We've also got our on-ice camera during stoppages. Some television innovations. Also, the NHL is trying some things out here. Clocks in the corner. Swedes got their first shot 13 minutes into the first period. On that flip play by Broberg from outside the blue line. Yeah. <laughs> Not getting picky at this point, Craig. No, you're right. You, you want to get you want to get something up on the board. Sidon works in, centers it, and that pass goes off the skate of Gritzuk. And we've got a tripping call. Going against Sweden now with six and a half to go in the period. And it'll be Ewell Waldron who goes off. Sweden, as you point out, they, they have not played on the offensive side of the red line very much through this first period. And there's the trip, the knee comes through, trying to be aggressive, but there's another situation where it could be a late hit. Now for the point, that shot was blocked off the stick of Daniel Gudek. Gudek back with him, has a look, sends it back side, the shot foot wide by Puck Goals, and Puck Goals and a goal scorer, knew he missed on one there, and looked skyward. Sure did. Gudek. Swings it back from her the long shot, deflected in front, and it fell down, puck still loose, and Puck Colson couldn't reach it. Tangled up in that pile was Carl Schoberg trying to kick it free, and a hand pass called against the Russians in the offensive zone. The faceoff will come outside. Officials from the three Canadian Junior Leagues, the Quebec League, OHL, and Western Hockey League. There was a chance by Puck Golson off the pass by Gudik. Just didn't get, wasn't able to get it settled down on a stick. There's the next one on the redirect up high. Real off good save by Annafeld. Off the face off, when Bjornfort sends it down. Bjornfort, another high-end offensive defenseman. A little smaller than Broberg, but still a six-footer. Tivula drops it off for Leah John. Works in. Leah John got poke check. You know, we've seen the great celebration by Alexander Ovechkin with the Stanley Cup, and it seemed to go on forever. You realize how much it means to him and Kuznetsov and others, but the, the dream for most young Russian players is to do just this, to play for the national team. Obviously, the men's senior national team is the ultimate goal, but... Pavel Datsu called winning Olympic gold the greatest accomplishment of his career. Leah Chav sends it back to Gushin. 
And that long point shot goes wide from Beachcock. And for most Russian players, the NHL is such a far-off thing. I think you see the national team on a regular basis, and it's on their conscience. Christian plays it back, and that hard shot pounded there by Beachcock with a glove save by Alnafelt. Alnafelt was hardly tested against Switzerland, faced 15 shots. They went with the 15-year-old Jesper Wallstedt in the games against Slovakia and Canada. He's got a good beat on that again. Russia just really hasn't made him have to deal with anything other than the shot coming at him. Eight to one, the shot's in favor of Russia. Four and a half to go here in the period. And that shot by Spiridonov goes off a stick, up and out of play. The first one period, second left on the penalty. The first period long. against Canada. Canada outshot Sweden 12-2. So Sweden's accustomed to being in a situation where they might be on the receiving end of, of play, but certainly found their way to get into that game against Canada, ultimately losing 4-3. Brought down and fired in by Alexander Lundqvist. And scooped up now by Joel Waldron. Tries to peel back. And our Teddy Kanina's in. Plays it back to center and swinging back is Albert Johansson. In a race for it, Johansson lost the puck there to Gritzik. Did a good job to pick it up. Gritzik drops it back, takes the return pass. Kniezet was calling for the puck and then threw it back. Pretty sure Gritzik was not expecting that pass back. Yeah, he didn't look like he was ready for it or expecting it. It's hard to be ready when you're not expecting it. Right it ahead for Rody and Amirov. In comes Amirov across the line. Shoots. Stay made by Alnafelt. And Amirov cleared away. Long shot bounced down off the stick of Verena. Semyon Chistyakov in behind the goal now with 2.45 to go. And the bouncing puck at center ice is scooped up and brought in by Raymond. Lucas Raymond, who has not had much time in the offensive zone this first period, throws so that in the corner. Now picks off that pass. Raymond, centering pass. Henriksen in, shoots it wide, and Henriksen looks skyward. There's the best scoring chance of the game for Sweden so far. Holtz works it back. Henriksen bobbled it. And put Colson has it back. Top line on top line here. Late in the first period. Henriksen leaves it there for Raymond. Well, when you have players like Lucas Raymond and Alexander Holtz, you, you have a turnover like the Russians had. You put yourself in all kinds of trouble because they can make things happen offensively very quickly. In comes Raymond back with it. Raymond taken down. Was tripped there by put Colson. Play continues. The Swedes are hollering for a penalty call. But Colson plays it across for Leah Chop. And now the return pass from Abramov goes up and out of play. Great chance for the Swedes a moment ago. Raymond with the steal sets up Henriksen. Not even a shot on goal. No score here in the first period. Well, it's not just a hockey tournament happening in Edmonton right now. There's all sorts of events happening around the Halinka Gretzky Cup. This is an officiating seminar. Referees from the NHL, the IIHF, WHL, Hockey Canada, USA Hockey gathering to discuss the status of the game and things such as video review, various proposed rule changes, lots of stuff happening around Edmonton this week, guys. There, there has, Ryan, and, and one of the issues of the game faces here in Canada and around the world is official retention, keeping young officials in the game. And a big part of that is the way they're treated at the ring. So young officials, teenagers who are working, you know, while going to school, don't need the hassles of being abused by adults. So Hockey Canada, others have worked 
a lot to work with former players. Actually, there's camps now in the U.S. and in Canada to get former official, former players rather, to look at officiating. That shot fired wide by Max Holden. Well, Jesse Gore, who's wearing the ref cam in today's game, he's from Montreal. He studied to be a police officer. Right. So, you know, here he is looking to perhaps be a, an official at higher levels. Gushin moves in. But he'll have options. Back to seat off, plays it across. That hard drive from Kanizev, kicked out by Aldefeld. And I'll set down the ice, icy call against the Swedes. So you reach a point as an official where you have to decide, are you going to be a full-time official, try the American League in NHL? Don Van Massenhoven did that, long-time NHL official, took a leave of absence from the Ontario Provincial Police Force for a couple of years. They finally said, hey, you're either an official or a police officer. So well, that's what Jesse was. I talked to Jesse before the game. His mother is a high school friend of mine, Debbie Megalitzi from Montreal. So I, I actually talked exactly about Don Van Ness and Holden with him before the game. But to your point about respect, he has options. So you love hockey, you might love officiating, but if you don't feel that you're being respected, why do you want to continue to put up with that? Dave Jackson from Montreal, who just retired as an official, said, I was yelled at by the best. Hitchcock, Keenan, Bowman, you name it. Nothing was as bad as what I got refereeing minor hockey in Montreal. Yep. And so one of the things that, that Hockey Canada, USA Hockey, and other federations are working towards is making the environment in the arena better for officials. Remember when Michelle Terry attacked the referee in the Memorial Cup in 94? 96. I, I forget what year it was. Yeah. Was that what gets Kamloops? That was a prison guard. Yeah. It was a bad decision. 12-2. The shot's on goal for the Russians after one period of play, but there is no score. George McPhee, the GM of the Vegas Golden Knights, will be our guest in the first intermission. You're watching the 2018 Alinka Cup, powered by Ram. Hockey keeps me active. Hockey brings out the best in me. Hockey gave me the chance to be a role model for the next generation. Hockey's all about family. Hockey taught me leadership. Hockey has taught us to never give up. Hockey taught me resilience. Hockey gave me... Friendship! Hockey just fun. Well, these are the best of the best so far at the tournament. The leading point getters here at the Holinka Gretzky Cup. And no surprise to see Alexei Lafreniere right up at the top, tied for the tournament lead with six points. Of course, he and Team Canada in action a little bit later on tonight in the other semifinal against the United States. And, you know, for Lafreniere, his rookie season in the queue was dynamite. 80 points in 60 games, scored another seven in the postseason, really has rocketed his way onto the national scene. A lot of talk about him potentially being the number one overall pick in the 2020 draft. And with that, with that in Canada, anytime a Canadian's in that position comes all kinds of attention and all kinds of hype. And at this event, Lafreniere is showing he is going to live up to that hype. He's a good skater, uh, he shoots the puck really hard, he has, he has a nose for the net, yeah, around the net he's, he's really smart and he, he has a touch uh, as well, he has all his sense, he knows where to be before the play happens, so uh, he's, uh, he's a really smart player. It's been a really nice season, I think that uh, I, was, uh, I didn't know what uh, to expect at the start, you know, just enter into a junior uh, career at 16, but uh, I think that everybody around me helped me a lot, uh, my teammates, and uh, when, I, when I went to U17, it was uh, really nice, U18 too, so it was, uh, it was a really nice season. Really talented player, but he, he'd been part of the program before. He'd been in, in the under 17, under 18 in April last year. So uh, he, he proved that in the past he could produce under pressure and he could produce uh, at key moments. There's always a little bit of pressure, but uh, I think that 
I just try to go day by day and focus on uh, you know, my performance uh, every day. I think that if I go, uh, go too far in the future, I will maybe lost uh, my goal you know, to just uh, stay in the present. So I just try to, to be in the present. I think we really have four lines we can produce, but Alexi, because he's been there, uh, he will play power play, he will play top six. He's a really important player for us. Oh, it, uh, it will mean everything. I think that uh, when I come twice uh, in an international competition, we, we lose, but uh, I think that now we're, we're really hungry for uh, the gold medal, and uh, it will mean uh, a lot to win it uh, in Canada for sure. Well, Lafreniere and Team Canada in action tonight. Semi-final game against the United States, 9 o'clock Eastern time, 6 o'clock Pacific time. You can check out all the action on TSN 2. 20 minutes are in the books here between Russia and Sweden. Russia carrying the bulk of play. Shots on net are 12 to 2. No surprise, they scored eight goals in their last game, but Sweden hanging in there. We've got more coming up after the break. Now the Vegas Golden Knights are one of the most remarkable stories we have ever seen in NHL history. So no surprise their fans are far and wide including here at the Halinka Gretzky Cup and the architect of that Vegas Golden Knights team George McPhee general manager joins us now George what do you think when you see that I mean you say you see that all the time wherever you happen to go. Yeah I'm amazed by what uh, transpired last year as much as anyone. Uh, it was just uh, a magical year from start to almost finished. Um, but it was uh, uh, just terrific for the league. Uh, we're an established franchise now and have a good foothold in Las Vegas. Um, but I guess it's now time to take the rearview mirror out and get ready for next year. Yeah, let's stay on that topic. You're in an interesting situation because I think you would have had three or four years of leeway to try and get yourselves where you got last year. You're supposed to be in a building phase, yet you get right to the cup final. So as the guy in charge, do you view the Vegas Golden Knights as in a Stanley Cup window and you have to general manage as such? Well, we're, we're trying to win. Uh, there are different ways to do this. The league gave us rules to work with that would allow us to, to have a competitive team. So we're going to try to be a competitive team. Uh, the old way of doing it, maybe the traditional way of, of uh, not being very good for a while and uh, there are no guarantees anymore with that, uh, in my mind, with that process because of the lottery. You're not guaranteed the top picks. And so we're, we're just going to try and be a good team every year and see what develops. Draft picks obviously are going to be at the core of you building this franchise. And we're going to take a look at uh, a number of your picks and some alumni here from this tournament, some real good players in that group. You had 20 picks in your first two years. You've got 10 coming up in 19, another nine picks in 2020. I imagine an event like this is crucial for you guys to get a real database going of the young and, and the best young players. Well, it's, it's, it's a real good way to start for our scouting staff. It gives them, you know, the top players from eight teams before their seasons even start. And so they're not chasing it all year long, trying to catch up um, as much as they'd like to be uh, on everybody. And from a manager standpoint, I like getting to know the players because I can then ask our scouts better questions and hopefully get better answers. Yeah, you, you like to do a lot of scouting. I wonder when it comes time to potentially trade a first round or a second round pick in the upcoming draft, if you've spent more time yourself watching those players play, are you less inclined to move picks when you know the players a little bit more intimately? Well, it cuts both ways. If you don't think it's a great draft, it's it's easier to, to move picks. If it is a good draft, you don't want to do it. But it certainly helps if you know a little bit and uh, and certainly supplement that with the, with the scouts now. Well, you're going to get a real nice book on the best there is under the age of 18 this week. George, congratulations on a great year. And Thank you very much. Us. Thank you, Ryan. George McPhee, general manager of the Vegas Golden Knights. We've got a good game here underway between Sweden and Russia. No score through 20 minutes of play. The high-scoring Russians will try and get on the board when we come back. Here in Edmonton, it's the first semifinal of the 2018 Holinka Gretzky Cup. There is no score through the opening period of play. The shots on goal decisively in Russia's favor, 12 to 2. The Swedes didn't get a first shot till 11 minutes into the game. Had one good chance late, missed the net. So the teams begin the second period five on five. 
Referee Fraser Lawrence for the Western League. Using IHF rules here. Some interesting tweaks by the IHF but the puck is stolen right away by Raymond. Lucas Raymond walks right and feeds it back across. Oh, what a save there on Holt. As Askarov comes across and makes a save 12 seconds into the period. He was in the room a minute ago. <laughs> And, you know, trying to get his crease a little bit tidy before he comes out here. But then a turnover right off the bat. And the wrong guy is to turn it over to Lucas Raymond. And what a pass. Gets him to the ice. And Holtz gets a pretty good shot away here. But what a really good save here by Askarov. Spir Spiridonov dove across as well to help break that up. I was amazed at that, how a goaltender just walks in. As Puck Colson comes in, that rolls off his stick. Played up by Ludwig Hedstrom. And now Nikolaya back for it. In comes Raymond again. Lucas Raymond. Drops it back for Henrikson. That was picked on. Now Holt reaching for it. Couldn't find the puck at his feet. Daniel Gutek. Moves ahead for the Russians. And back to Bevin. Pick it up as Broberg. Boy, the scouts are buzzing about Broberg. Jack Hughes is widely considered, including by you, to be the prohibitive first overall pick of the next draft in 2019. The American for the National Team Development Program. There's Broberg again on the wraparound. Dylan Cousins making some noise, and Broberg as well. He sure is. And, you know, we got a little bit of a look at Capo Caco and Kamloops with the World Junior Showcase. He missed the game because of an injury, left another game early. So the room had that knocked away. You know, Bramov moves in, but the icing call is Lucasen got back in time for the Swedes. So here's the look from the ref cam on that save by Sakharov. Lucas Raymond, that puck finds his stick. The delay, what a pass across. He is a puck hound, isn't he? Lurking, lurking, and then the puck ends up on his stick. He's smart. You know, some players can anticipate the play, but his hands are able to take advantage as well. You know, a lot of players are in the right spot, but they can't do the things with his hands, with their hands that Raymond can do. Brought in now by Leah Chomp. Works back in. The save made by Elifel. Rebound and fanning on that was a Bramo. And back comes Max Volgren the other way. Max Volgren. Winds his way in, poke check there by Beachcock. Up to center ice it goes, tapped back by Alamov. Takes the return pass, Alamov a long shot. Locked away by Elnefelt. And the puck goes up and out of play. Among those in attendance here for the Detroit Red Wings, Chris Draper. Member of their executive team at the 91 World Junior in Saskatoon, the day of the last game, Canada against the Soviet Union. Dick Todd, the Canadian coach, brought Draper in and said, you've got Bure. Bure had scored, Pavel Bure had scored 27 goals in 20 career World Junior games. Had torn the tournament apart. So Draper said, I've won the Stanley Cup multiple times. I played the Olympics. That day, and that game against Bure, who did not score in the game, is one of the highlights of my career. Well, Chris could skate, and he was a terrific skater and, and just as much of a competitor as well. So Dick Todd tasking him with that. You knew Chris would dig right in and do everything he could to shut him down, and he did. No easy task in that either. Played the checking line that year with Mike Sillinger and Stephen Rice. Centering pass and wired right on goal. A great chance there for Rodion on Amirov. And Amirov turned away by Aldefeld. Chris Draper, by the way, will join Ryan Rashad in our second intermission. Pod, Go Pod Colson makes a really good play from below the goal line. He delays a little bit. A turnover. He jumps on the play down here. Good hands. Delays, and then he brings it right out. Nice little play there by Amirov to get himself open, give himself some room. But again, Anafelt with a good save. By the way, I don't know if Chris would tell this story in the intermission interview, but the language Dick Todd used was a little more <laughs> descriptive. Had to do with if Bure goes to the bathroom, you go with him. What a player the junior. 
And I, as that works in, that shot was blocked. Maybe the best ever. Burry might have been the best player ever in the World Juniors. He toyed with that tournament. He really did, didn't he? I mean. Him, Forsberg, Eric Lindros. Jordan Everly is Canada's all-time leading goal scorer at the World Junior. That doesn't do it justice for the number of important goals he scored. Off the end boards it goes. Picked down by Chinikov. And now Lundquist goes ahead for Isaac Anderson. The scoring for the Swedes is so top-heavy as Holtz moves in and shoots. And the save made by Askarov. Six of their 12 goals have come from that top line. And now a lead pass finds Raymond. In alone, Raymond, poke check. And a great play there by Askarov to take it away from Raymond who had busted in. But Lucas Raymond's been the most dangerous Swede again. But Coles it. Shoots, that was blocked. And Raymond is shaken up as he goes to the Swedish bench. After that collision with the Russian netminder, Yaroslav Askarov. Feely back as Gutik centers it. And put Coles in, couldn't find it. Broberg trying to play it out, gets a second chance, lines it ahead for Henriksen. And of a long shift for him. Plays it ahead to the hulking Elmer Soderblom, the six foot six, 17 year old. He's taken down. Soderblom scored a power play goal in the last game against Canada. He's another guy that scouts are talking about as an intriguing project, a guy that would need some time to develop. When you're 17 and six foot six, I would, I would guess that would be the case. Yeah, it sure would be. Well, George McPhee, who joined Ryan Rashog in that first period intermission, talked about watching him now and then looking at him over the course of the year. So here's the play here by Lucas Raymond. Coming right in, but real good play here by Askarov. Gets the stick out, doesn't really give him a chance to come across the front of the net. He's got to go back. I don't think that was the plan for Raymond. 17 to six now, the shots in favor of the Russians. Still no score later tonight. Canada against the United States in the second semifinal. Amira works it back in front, but pulls it. Slides it back at the point along wrist drop by Chistikov. That goes wide. Picked up by Waldron. The one thing that coaches will tell you, they notice that having coached at different levels, at the National Hockey League level, they hit the net way more often. You're important. It's all part of the, the process. Yeah, it is, and it's, uh, it, it's an important part of the process. Amirov. Comes streaking in. Amirov. Hope check there. Maybe by Lundquist. We saw his uncle do that once or twice in his career. Just get the stick in the right position. Now a centering pass by Amirov goes wide. We used to say Nick Lutcher had a, sti had a stick like a serpent's tongue. <laughs> like a snake's tongue. Deep gone. I say! Fired down the ice by Lundquist. But the icing negated as Schober got there first. Schober tried to center it. Knocked away by Sidov. Nikita Sidov. Moves it ahead for Chinikov. Chinikov shoots off the outside of the goal. Chinikov back with it, a poke check there by Kostmar. And move ahead neatly by Broberg. Finds Schober. And Schober got his stick lifted, and the puck taken away by Spiridano. Spiridano from Magnitogorsk. Played for their under 17 team last year. Not a great year for the Russian junior team last year in Buffalo. As Henriksen works it and shoots, and that was blocked by Spiridano. There was no area of their team where they could really hang their hat, whether defensively or offensively or grind you. They were okay. And that's really the extent of what their team was. Didn't really have the, the high-end game-breaking skill you're used to seeing. Didn't have a couple of guys you'd look at that were super dangerous. Played across to Beachcock. And now Hendrickson steals that away for Raymond. Brought back the other way by Abramov. Mikhail Abramov. Yeah! 
centers it and walking in now is Leah Job and he's taken down and a penalty call against the Swedes. It'll be a holding call against Albert Lucasen and the Russians will go to the power play with the game still scoreless here in period number two. So on the Swedish bench, their team doctor is that man, Ryan Allenby, from Coquitlam, BC, played for Chilliwack in the BC Junior League. Went on to medical school in Norway, met his wife there, moved to Sweden, is now the, school, the doctor for the Swedish National Junior and under 18 team. It's amazing where the game will take you. Yeah? That sure is. Came up to me at the airport coming back from Kamloops and said, said hello and I said, well, you're you speak good English for a guy from Sweden as well. Actually from BC. <laughs> yeah. At long point shot. Up by Allen, felt the rebound, knocked wide by Puck Colson. So the Russians are back on the power play here. And back at the point, Mirano. For Puck Colson. Little backdoor pass and almost connecting on that was Gudik. Gudik. Drops it back to Puck Colson. And Puck Colson. Works back across the top. Mirano's shot was blocked. Boy, the Russians had that great power play in Pyeongchang with the player behind the net. Defenseman coming down from both directions. So tough to defend. Gusev was the man that, Nikita Gusev was the man that ran it for them down low. Kanezev. Plays it back across the puck, pulls him with a shot that was blocked in front. And it's getting in the way with Ludwig Hedstrom and the puck cleared down. Pass picked up at center ice by Jakob Gronhagen and Gronhagen feeds it back down to the Russian zone. Well, it feels like the Russians are carrying the play. It doesn't feel like the Swedes are under siege. It is, it's funny, it's, it's sort of a, it's a leverage game almost. Yeah. And you think eventually they'll break it open, but they haven't yet. Lead pass to Gritzik working in. That rolls wide to the goal. 25 seconds to go in this Russian power play. Seedov across to Kniazev. Gritzik centers it, and Raymond got a stick on that to knock it back to the point. Both Raymond and Henderson from the top line kill penalties as well. That shot deflected by Spiridonov, and Hugo Olnefeld hangs on in the Swedish crease. Yeah, interesting different philosophies. Lucas Raymond and Alexander Holtz, top offensive players, but Raymond gets out there and kills penalties and has been dangerous on the penalty kill. One shot for the Russians on that power play. Still no score midway through the second period. The Russians outscored their opposition 18 to five in their first three round robin games. And now locked in a battle here in the semifinal at the Halinka Gretzky Cup. Now a loose puck in front, a great chance there for Philip Broberg, he's turned away. Drop back for Berselius. Robert not afraid to get in deep. Now a loose puck in front, the long reach there. Velmer Soderbo with a quick chance, turned away by Askarov. Here they come again, Wahlberg. And Max Wahlberg turned away. Perselius. Heels on from behind the net, Perselius. Spins back and plays it across to Bjornfors. Bjornfors' wrist shot was blocked by Gushin. And Daniel Gushin chips it back to center. That puck went off that curved stanchion of the Swedish bench. And play is called with 9-12 to go here in the second period. The Swedes have had their chances here in the second period. Elmer Soderblom turned away by Yaroslav Iskarov. Seventh place game between the Swiss and Finland took place on the community arena in Edmonton earlier on today. 1-0 Switzerland in the first period. 
How about that great cross ice pass to Miko Kokinen? That will tie up the game. And about five minutes later, off the face off, Henry Nikonen goes top shelf. Two to one, Finland. And Nikonen was not done there. Nifty little feed to the side of the net. Nikonen standing there and deposits it. Disappointing finish for Finland. They win the game 8 2, but they have not medaled since 2012 at this event. So Switzerland will finish eighth. There's no relegation in this tournament. Is it, it is an invitational event, however, so the organizers can decide who they want to bring. So if you continually posted poor results, I'll help, I'll help them decide. There's nobody better than the 18 here. Germany hasn't been in the U18 for years. But Coles and works it and shoots. And all the felt hangs on. Every time I throw up a trial balloon, you just pop it. <laughs> I did. I, I was just, thinking to myself, I, just, I think I was a little too quick. I just kind of threw it out there. And I, <laughs> like, he's gunned it down. Okay, let me ask you this. Do you think this tournament could stand 10 teams? Um, yeah, the World Junior does. Yeah. And the U18 does. Yeah. Um, I think it's good for hockey. I think, it, I think it's good for hockey if the likes of, you know, Germany, Latvia, Kazakhstan are able to play here. So at the World Under-17 Challenge, Canada has three teams. They put three teams, 66 Canadian players, and then it's the USA, Czech, Finland, Russia, and Sweden. Right. So, you know, maybe they should look at having two Canadian teams and trying to give some exposure. I, I know they want more. But, I'm going to I'm I'm take that down right away because you you should never score against Canada. No, you're right. In your national team uniform, right? Yeah, no, you're right. What, what would have happened if that North American team from the World Cup that played Canada or the U.S. in a, in a, a medal round game? Connor McDavid or Jack Eichel scored the overtime oh, goal against their own country. But they have three teams there. At the other 17. Right, yeah. But no, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting they bring three teams here. What I was going to suggest is, is maybe they should open it up to Switzerland or one yeah. of uh, Germany at sure. that point. I know Germany used to compete in it, and I know that uh, Slovakia did, and maybe that's where you have to give a little bit more opportunity. Raymond poked that free ahead to Henriksen. Henriksen swings it back across. Raymond in, shoots, and racing back. Got a stick on him with Miranov. Now a chance back in front. Henriksen turned away. There was discussion about a second Canadian team in this event. As streaking now is Gushin, a great rush there. And Alnafelt holds the post and turns him away. So the teams of the World Junior that are not here would be Denmark and Kazakhstan for the upcoming World Junior. But the Danes would tell you that being at the top level of the World Junior for the last four years has been enormous for their program. Yeah. Yeah, this will be their fifth consecutive year at the World Junior A pool. As you point out, it's trying to bring up the level of play from the other countries and exposing them to it. The more you young players, I mean, even if they get drilled, I mean, yep. even getting pounded. Well, they get to see what the level is. Right. Now it's pulling back in the corner by Leah Chan. Off the puck to Berselius. Leah Chow back with it. Plays it down to Gushin. And Gushin tripped down by Hedgeham. Another penalty coming out of Sweden. Touched up by Berselius. And with 7-10 to go, here in the second period, Ludwig Hedstrom goes off for the trip. No doubt about this one. Hedstrom gets his stick right on the back there. Legs of Gushin and down he comes. He's a pretty good penalty killer too, Hedstrom. So the Russians, Spiridonov chooses to take the face off on this side, the right-handed shot, wins it back. And he is it. Back at the point, and that shot by Sinov goes off a stick and wide. Johansson clears that just out. And now Johansson in the battle there with Kniazev. And back at the point is Sinov. A lot of countries, a lot of teams are using four forwards, one defenseman on the power play. I don't know when the Russians will go to it, but they'll be last. Yeah. They like, they have their power play done a very specific way. It's worked for them over the years. 
Nikolaev works in. He was poke checked by Dronek, and that's not a shot of the Russians, but they have a very clear formula. Works for their players, and has been very successful for them. Well, you think about the green line. I, I guess when you have Kasatone off and Fatisov on the back line, yeah, it's like having McInnes and Pronger. You don't have to put another forward out there. Daniel Gudik swings back across the top. 45 seconds to go in the power play. He fired that wide, but calls it back for Mirano to Pud Colson. Two Russians standing in front. Pud Colson through the traffic. It goes off a leg and wide. Bank back by Nikolaev. Mironov long reach shot at the goalpost. That was tipped and rang off the pipe. Mironov again. Pud Colson. Mironov with a long reach shot that was blocked in front as Grothag had gotten away. And it's fed down the ice by Philip Ostrom. Final second down is power play. They're on off. William Mironov has two goals in turnout. Played for three different teams last year. He's a six foot three defenseman who can really move the puck. Henriksen in shoot. Save man rebound. A chance for Raymond turned away by Askarov. No shots on goal for the Russians on that power play. Inside five to go here. In the second period, Raymond works in. Lucas Raymond, who's had a strong first two periods for the Swedes. Trying to play that ahead, flipped in behind him, and now Raymond leaves it there for Berselius. I don't know what will change the game more, a goal by Russia or a goal by Sweden. Well, I'm thinking that, that Russia will just continue on playing this way, whereas if Sweden scores, I could maybe see Russia opening it up a little bit more. Dusha. Back across to Liachov. Yaroslav Liachov is going to Gatineau in the Quebec League next year. Brings it in. Liachov, a 16-year-old born in September 2001. And the lead pass to Liachov, but the play is offside at the Russian line. 20 to 10, the shots on goal for Russia. Great chance to pull things of the rink. Miranov shot deflected by Nikolaev goes off the pipe. And then a chance for Hendricks to go just wide. Well, one of the other events surrounding this tournament was a great opportunity for facility operations leaders from across Western Canada and Alberta get a behind the scenes look here at the arena and a facility operations panel discussed with them everything from power engineering, Nate's communication and team building sessions as well were involved in this. One of the many events surrounding the Helenka Gretzky tournament, Gordon. Well, this is quite the facility. The water dressing room is something like 22,000 square feet. And pretty awe inspiring for players to come here. We talked to some of the Slovak kids who have been here. And you look around to a National Hockey League building, the size of it, the scope of it being on television for the first time. A lot of these kids have never been on TV before. I was talking to a few people. Uh, Kevin Lowe, the vice chairman of the Oilers Entertainment Group, former Edmonton Oilers great. He took the Swiss team through, through a tour of their locker room and, you know, all the facilities down there. I guess the Swiss kids were just open jawed, wide eyed, couldn't believe it. Yeah. Right, guys, one of the other guys that uh, got his first opportunity to see the arena was Chris Pronger, who uh, sat on set with us and did an interview yesterday. He was extremely impressed with someone that spent some time in the old barn here in Edmonton and got eyes on the new barn for the first time. Soderblom reaching for it and brought back by Amira. First time the tournament has been held in North America as it's brought in by Nikolaev. It'll be here every other year for the next five years. Next year back in Slovakia and the Czech Republic as Soderblom brings it ahead. Soderblom, long shot. That went just high. Seemed to handcuff a scar a little bit. Brought in now by Pud Colson. Pud Colson flips that pass ahead just on the reach of Nikolaev. Now knocked down by Gudin. 2.45 to go. And I see Wade Pop as Pashchenko tried to milk that as best he could, but the lines were wanted by. 
So it looked like Vasjeko was skating uphill. Yeah. <laughs> but he kept, he kept downshifting. <laughs> Waldron. That's your Waldron. Looks at that. The Waldron twins don't play on the same line. They play for Moto, the under 18 program up in Orange Coldspeak, where the Sedin twins made their name all those years ago. And that long shoot in his glove by Askarov. Well, Bjornfot took that shot quickly, and you know, Askarov had to be really alert because it was just one of those quick get the puck and then direct it towards the net. The importance of a goaltender really being attuned to what's unfolding around him. Askarov was sharp in picking that up. Henrik's in for the faceoff, wins it back to Raymond, feeds it back across, and that shot fired wide by Johansson. Albert Johansson trying to hold the line, but has to retreat now as Alimov brings it in. Alimov looks for the return pass from Amirov. That one a skew, and now Bjornport tries to play it out. Picked off. And that shot at the short side post by Amirov. Spirit on off. Lost the puck to Holtz. Drops it back to Henriksen. Carl Henriksen works in, shoots, it goes off the leg of Tahu in the wide. Picked back up by Henriksen, drops it back to Raymond with a shot, that was blocked. And that's Tahu got in the way of that as well. And another penalty coming up as the stick of Tahu came free, but they're calling him for the trip, I believe. And so the Swedes will go to the power play. <laughs> Their first was negated when they took a face-off violation penalty on the opening draw of the power play, so we'll see if they can get through the opening draw without it. Here's Alexander Holtz, and right there you can see the stick of Tyrulin getting right into the skates. And here's earlier Vasily, but goals in. It's bumped into the boards. And so the centerman, Arvid Kosmar, indicated the lines, but he wants to face off on this side of the ice. He's a right hand shot. And loses the face off with the line held by Berselius. Lynn Gullison saying to us earlier in a panel discussion that their centers on their offside, like their weak wing, were down around 35% in Calgary. That's pretty customary in the NHL. Looked wide by Ostrom. Played across by Broberg, and that wrist shot was blocked. Taken by Schoberg. This power play came at the end of a shift for Henriksen, Raymond, and Holt, so they're on the bench Last right now. And not for long. Here they come now. Final minute now, the period. When you think about the power play setup, let's just look at Edmonton. They have McDavid and they have Dry Seidel and they have Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Ryan Strom's going to have to be an important player as a right shot centerman in certain situations. Lucas Raymond tried to feed that back. It bounces back and it's spotted high and wide. As Holtz got that shot away, the Swedes go with four forwards, one D mount the power play. If that rule ever came to the NHL. Right. Holtz. And the shot by Bjornfoot trickles down, the rebound cleared away as Holtz oh, goes back. Worry, no, stick. The NHL is experimenting with this at this tournament. They've got their hockey operations people here watching it. Holtz, a high shot off the mask, comes back in. And Askarov makes two saves on Alexander Holtz and appeared to be shaken up by that shot. Alexander Holtz has one of those shots that just explodes right off his stick. And he doesn't telegraph it. You don't get a really good read on it if you're a goaltender. And it comes off of that stick firing. And you can see where the good position by Askarov. But the quickness of the release and the velocity of the shot very impressive by Alexander Holtz. So, of course, the old IHF rule was that once a goaltender was struck in the mask by a shot, play was called right away. Shots this period, 11-8 in favor of the Swedes. 20 to 13 overall on Russia's side. And if the Russians don't score here in the next nine seconds, first time in the tournament, they've gone two straight periods without scoring. But Colson works in. 
Poke checked away by Soderblom. And time winds down here in the second period, and Russia and Sweden are going to the third. Tied at zero. The shots are 20 to 13 in favor of Russia through two periods of play. The Sweden will have 25 seconds of power play time to carry into the third period. You're watching the 2018 Halinka Gretzky Cup semifinal number one, powered by Ram. Season, more than 100 teams take to the ice with hopes of playing at Canada's National Female Midget Championship, the ESSO Cup. Premier marketing partner of Hockey Canada, Imperial Oil is proud to help the growth of women's hockey across Canada. Visit HockeyCanada.ca slash ESSO Cup. Every year, players compete for a chance to play at Canada's National Midget Championship, the TELUS Cup. As the biggest fans of Canada's biggest game, TELUS is helping the hockey stars of today and tomorrow. Visit HockeyCanada.ca slash TELUS Cup. Welcome back to Edmonton. Canada getting set to take on the United States tonight in the other semifinal. They, were leaning, they will be leaning heavily on Dylan Cousins. 6'3", 180 pounds. He's fast and he's powerful. WHL Rookie of the Year. This guy is expected to be one of the top prospects for the upcoming NHL entry draft. And when you listen to him talk about where he's from and talk about the game, you can tell hockey is very much in his blood. Growing up at a very young age, my dad had me on a backyard rink during the winter, so I'd always be out there every day till late at night doing that. And in the summers, we'd always be doing outdoors stuff like fishing, camping, and definitely grew up being an outdoorsman. Coming from Whitehorse, nobody really thought like that I could make it. And right now, I, f I feel like I'm on my way to doing that, but I still have a long ways to go. And yeah, it just shame me, like nothing comes easy and you have to work for everything you want in life. And I believe I'm doing that so far. Even other guys from Canada just think it's like some crazy little small town where everyone lives in igloos and stuff, but it's just like a normal little town and it's not even that small, like it's not far behind like everyone thinks, it's pretty advanced, so. We had good development coaches up there too, you know, they helped me out a lot, Jake Jurusic and Martin Laurie. Uh, they were huge parts of my success and my development, but even then I knew I had to get away, I still had a young age to improve that. All right, I was always trying to play up in age and some people didn't agree with that, but I'd always try and do that, but even when you're playing on a rep team, there's no other rep teams to play against. So you play in the house league, the age above. Like every once in a while, you'd get to go out for tournaments, but during the season, that's all it was, was playing against older kids in the house league. Never give up on your dreams. Like, and even though I had to move away, you don't have to anymore. You know, They've got a program up there that's getting good and getting more competition to play against during the season. So this season, I for sure have some big goals, obviously, going into my draft year. But I can't focus on that too much. I just got to focus on helping my team win. And I want to be a leader on that team and I want to be a top guy on that team. And I just want to do my best and reach my full potential for when the season starts. And winning gold on home ice would be insane. It would be a huge honor wearing that Canadian jersey. That's just, just putting it on the jersey. It's an incredible honor. And to win gold in that on home ice would just be amazing. And I hope we can do that. Goal and an assist for Cousins so far for Team Canada in the tournament in three games played. And there you see it, Canada in the U.S. tonight, 9 Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific time on TSN2. Meanwhile, here in beautiful Edmonton this afternoon, Russia and Sweden, nice toe-to-toe -to -toe affair. Swedish goalie Hugo Almfeldt, though, putting up a wall, 20-13. to Russia leading with the shots on net, but no score. Detroit Red Wings' Chris Draper joins us next. No score between Team Sweden and Team Russia on semi-final Friday through 40 minutes of play here at the Holinka Gretzky Cup presented by Ram. And pleased to be joined now from the Detroit Red Wings by Chris Draper, uh, assistant to the general manager since 2012. And the general manager, Chris, and yourself got some important work done. Dylan Larkin locked up to a new contract, five years. It's big news for the organization. Must be nice to have a guy who's coming off a career year locked up for the next while. Yeah, it sure is. And, and you can't say enough about Dylan Larkin, not only as a hockey player, but as, as a young person. He means so much to our organization. He does everything. He, does, he, he has a hockey school there that he and his brothers run. 
he's really given back to the community and obviously more most important you know we He's, he's born and raised in Detroit. He grew up a Red Wing fan, and today is a, it's a great day for the Larkin family. It's certainly a great day for the Red Wing organization. 16 goals and 63 points for Larkin in uh, what was a, a career year for him. Let's get to this tournament, and you have attended this tournament for a number of years when it was overseas. And as you look at some of the players that you guys have drafted in recent years, it just goes to show how critical this tournament is in finding some of those players. I imagine you recall seeing these guys at this event. <laughs> I sure do. They were obviously, uh, you know, a, a a big part of that tournament uh, you know I think it's uh, it's a fantastic tournament it's a, it's in August you have an opportunity you know uh, you start hearing of all the all the names and you get to come here for for one week and watch these guys play and uh, you know it's amazing how all of a sudden you watch these guys in the Holinka and you get excited about them and you really just start tracking them throughout the season wherever wherever it takes you if it takes you to Europe you're gonna go over and you're gonna watch the European players play obviously from Canada this year uh, a lot of guys in the Western Hockey League so it looks like uh, going to be spending some time throughout here but uh, it's just a, it's a fantastic tournament to watch fantastic tournament to scout and you just see the players that are out here right now and a lot of these players that are impacting this tournament you're going to be hearing their names being called in the in the draft in in Vancouver best on best there aren't a lot of opportunities for players that haven't been drafted yet for scouts to see them in best true best on best action and really that's what this event is isn't it absolutely and especially for Canada because obviously once this tournament breaks up all the uh, all of Team Canada. Most of them are obviously going to go back to their CHL teams, and when the U18 Worlds are, 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 are on, a lot of those kids are, are still playing in playoffs and playing for their CHL teams, so they're not always available for that. But this tournament, Canada certainly has an opportunity to put their best players on the ice, you know. And, and for us, it's a great opportunity to see them. But then you just go through, you know, the Swedes, the Russians, you name it. They just uh, they put a great team together. It's a it's a great event. It's and and like I said, it's a it's a great start to the scouting season for us. Where you grab some names and it's amazing how you just all of a sudden start following these players and tracking these players. Chris, you, you accomplished a tremendous amount over your career, both in the NHL but internationally as well. You had success at both levels, 102, 20, 122 games internationally I believe you played. Describe the difference between the success and the bond of an international team versus your club team. Um, very obviously very fortunate to play with the players that I played both for Team Canada and for the Detroit Red Wings. I've played with some of the greatest players that this game has ever seen. Very thrilled to be able to do that. The Detroit Red Wings, obviously, you start a training camp and you play 82 games and then the st playing for the Stanley Cup, it's two months of every other night. It's an absolute grind and, and when you're the last team standing, it's obviously very re rewarding. For me, whenever I got the call and opportunity to play for Team Canada, there was no hesitation on, on my part whatsoever. Whether it was to play in the World Championships, I had an opportunity to play in the World Cup, I had an opportunity to play in the Olympics, play in World Juniors, like you said, and every time I put on that Team Canada jersey, it was an unbelievable thrill for for, for myself and and also for my family so uh, you know it's it's certainly different but uh, uh, proud Canadian and uh, you know when, whenever my name was called and, and that phone rang I wanted to answer it and I wanted to represent my country and fortunate to do it and and have some success doing it as well you always represented your country very well very well Chris thanks for taking the time to join us today enjoy the rest of the tournament yep, thanks Ryan appreciate that is it Chris Draper from the Detroit Red Wings we got a good game going on here between Russia and Team Sweden third period action is around the corner no score yet it's going to be a barn burning finish. Back here in Edmonton getting set for the start of the third period between Russia and Sweden the first of two semifinal games at the 2018 Holinka Gretzky Cup no scoring in that period either the Swedes outshot the Russians 11 8 and will have the power play for 25 seconds to start the third period. And for a team that relies so much on its top line, a bad break for the Swedes. But the top line was on when the power play was awarded. They missed the first minute of the man advantage. Up there to start it down, though. Hendrickson, Raymond, and Holtz for the faceoff loss and sit down the ice. The Holtz was the one that drew the penalty, and it was towards the end of the shift. Bjorn Forts lines it ahead now, brought in by Hendrickson. Back in front for Holtz, that was taken away by Nikolaya. But pulls it. Works it around Lucasen, but pulls and throws it back in front. And racing back to break that up was Tobias Bjornford. And the teams are back on five on five. Still squared at zeros. Still to come tonight. Canada and the United States. The winners of these two games will meet in the gold medal game tomorrow night. The losers will face each other in the bronze tomorrow afternoon here in Edmonton. 
Long shooting, swatted away by Askarov. And Liachov brings it in now for Abramov. Back for Liachov. He got spun around. It's brought out by Yul Walgren. He lost it. And a penalty coming out of the swings. Liachov was hooked. And so just a minute and six seconds into the period. The Swedes are going to call for a hooking, and this time it's Oscar Berselius who's got the stick in on Liachov. Liachov is a real shifty player. Attacking. The players that attack in the middle of the ice, they're going to draw more penalties than the guys that want to play outside the dots, and Liachov does exactly that, trying to break down the defenders. So the Russians set up in the power play, but calls it. Long wrist shot, that deflected just wide. Out the other side of Gudek. Daniel Gudek. Gudek has a look and slides it back. Miranov with a shot that was blocked by Schobert. But calls it to Miranov. Miranov across to Gudek. Gudek in shoots, it's off a skate. But calls and keeps it alive. But calls it. Across to Gudek. Gudek in, shoots, and Almafel makes the save. Hangs on. There's 1.22 to go in the Russian power play. In the meantime, as this goes on, pulling in as we speak, the Canadian team bus. Wheels on the bus. <laughs> the boys on the bus. Here they come, getting ready for their semifinal against the USA. Very good American team. About 8 3 to these Russians. There's 3 3 midway through the second period. Now Putt Coles and centers it. That was knocked away. Check that. That was Gushin centering it. Liachov. Back down to Gushin. To Liachov. Gushin. Slides it back. And now Beachcom at his first attempt block. The second one gets down. And on the belt, knocked that away. Liachov drops it down to Gushin. Gushin swings that back to Abramov. Cross he goes and beats him with a hard shot, and that's blockered away by Alnafel. And the Swedes bring it back shorthanded, but Ostrom is in there alone as the Swedes are changing, throws it way back to Henriksen. And he'll tap it back to Lundqvist. 20 seconds to go in the Russian power play, and Lundqvist bounces it down. And racing in with a loose puck was Henriksen. He knocked it free. Henriksen gets loose behind the goal. Sends it back for Raymond. His shot was blocked. Nikolaev got in the way. Brought back now by Kadiazev. Two shots on goal for the Russians on that power play. Still no score here in the third period. And the bouncing puck goes back to Nikita Sedov. Chinikov throws it back in the corner. Lundquist goes back for it. Plays it in. There's Broberg. Philip Broberg's got a head of steam, and here he comes. Broberg's got a forward defending. Works in. Broberg. Back in. Shot. In the goal post. What a chance for Broberg diving in. He tried the forward Nikolaev. It was a great decision, and he rang it off the pipe. That's a hard play for any player to make coming in on your strong side in the front of the net. And to keep your leverage, and what a play here with the off the inside of the post and across, just avoiding Askarov coming back. He hits him in the arm and could have easily played that into the net right there. But Askarov really alert and quick as well. But I mean, you watch that type of skating and that type of an ability. And now working in his Volver with a chance. And Walgren turned away. And busting in was Max Walgren. And now we got a Swedish player level. Daniel Good is going to go off for a penalty here. And here the referee Jesse Gower saying, I, I got 28. It all starts after Bruselius tries to find a loose puck in the feet of Eskarov. Here he comes in late. That's what drew the Russian players and their ire. And 
You're right, Jesse Gower looks like the only guy getting the penalty is Gudik. Yeah, so Gudik will go off. The Swedes will go back to the power play. They're 0 for 1 with two shots. And now because I think the defense came in in that scrum, are they going to move the face off outside? They are. Raymond getting the explanation. Raymond brings it in and fires around. The top line goes to work for the Swedes. It's number four gone here in the third period. Raymond knocks it down. Henriksen slides it ahead to Holt. Drops it back to Raymond. In comes Raymond with it now. And the Swedes get set up. Slides it across the hole to the wrist shot. That was blocked by Spiridonov for of the Russians. And set down the ice. Canadian players watching in the tunnel. As Holtz works in, shoots, it dribbles wide. Is it there for Soderblom? And Moronov slaps it off the glass and down the ice. You watch Holtz, he's always trying to maneuver the puck into a position where he can open up the goaltender, and he's got that quick release. Broberg with it, brings it back across, and that shot by Kostmar ramps off a stick up and out of play. So here's Holtz with hands in. He's comfortable with his hands in tight with opposing sticks there. Now that's a pretty good play by Moronov. And that's pretty impressive. Lucas Raymond and Alexander Holtz, two 16 year olds playing so well. I'll tell you what, everybody will love Raymond if he finds a way to get on the scoreboard again. You just said that, didn't you? I did. Broberg. Right across to Bruselius. <laughs> How long have you been sitting on that? seconds up really quick okay I just need to see something and it just immediately comes to mind that amazing mind of yours <laughs> Broberg Berselius Broberg and a long wrist shot score But he's been an overall force as well. And I mean, watch it. He gets his head up the whole time, and he's just looking. Is the goaltender opening up? Is there a screen there? And then just the ability to snap that puck the way he does, just opening, it's in. That's a heck of a play by Philip Broberg, to say the least. But the manner in which he goes about it, that's impressive. So I have a problem, Craig. Okay. Having been in Kamloops last week at the World <laughs> Junior Showcase in here, I've got 12 players in my top five for the draft next year. <laughs> well, you heard George McPhee talk about the benefit of knowing the players. Ryan Rashog asked him, would you trade a pick? He goes, well, it cuts both ways. Because if it's a good draft, you're reluctant to do it. And if it's, if it's a bad draft, well, you might look not as good a draft. You look at these top end players, it's pretty good. There's Broberg there, but there's his head up the whole time looking for the opening. Great shot. Philip Broberg is going to be a star in the NHL. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say anything less than that, Gordon. He really is. And he's not the only one here. Canada and the United States still on deck as that shot from Bjornford goes up and out of play. Well, we got the first goal. It's Sweden. Now let's see if the Russians open up. They seem to be in that mode of we're getting chances. We have the puck. The Swedes aren't really threatening us. And now they're down one with 14 minutes left. Are they going to initiate a little bit more? It's funny you see Magnus Havlet behind the Swedish bench. Havlet's a pretty fiery guy back there. For years, the Swedish national team was coached by Par Marx, who yeah. was stone-faced, never said a word. Very calm guy. But then you have Ricard Gronberg, who's the head coach of their national team. He's fiery. 
Thomas Martin, who coaches their, their junior team, he's wound pretty tight, and Havlin, too. Well, I, I'll go back even just a little bit further to 2006 when Ben Aki Gustafson coached the Swedes to the Olympic gold medal. He was a very animated, fiery coach as well. Roger Ronberg, who coached their national yes. junior team, is now in Columbia, was a pretty intense guy. So now the Russians open it up a bit here. The shots are 23-16, but for the most part, there have not been a lot of dangerous Russian chances. Amirov was tied up there and picked up by Ostrom. Philip Ostrom throws that towards the goal. Miranov got in the way. Another guy picked off by pick of the draft. Spiridonov. He might have 15 in my top five by the time we're done here. That's okay because that tells you about the depth of the draft and it also says teams now try to figure out who who does fit in that group, who's the next group. Bud Coles and throws that down towards the goal. Bud Coles and back with it at the blue line. Bud Coles and a long re shot off the outside of the post. Set back the other way as Zamirov has it. Back he goes to Kuzyakov. Kuzyakov. Back for Bud Coles and centers it, bouncing puck loose in front. Spiridonov trying to reach it. Good pressure now by the Russians. Amirov. Down the puck, Colson. At the point, Baranov shoots the same main rebound. Loose in front is on the call. Held on just long enough. And that puck skipped just wide. Puck Colson. Back for Baranov. And this time the shot goes off. Sweden's Philip Ostrom. Up and out of play. Moments after the Swedes had taken the lead, a great chance for the Russians to equalize. And Hugo Alnefeld wears that mask for a reason. Well, Skarov on that goal, he, he's doing everything right. He's looking to try to find that puck, and as he leans to his right, Broberg, who has his head up and looking for an opening, he finds it the other way, and then here's the Russian chance off the mask of Anafalt, and then Amarov tries to corral that rebound, but it just bounces wide. For a young defenseman, when you're trying to generate offense from inside that blue line, trying to look for those openings, such an important part in getting the puck through. And for all the talk about big point shots, some of the most effective guys Rarely do it. Nick Lindstrom rarely did. Larry Murphy. Chris Pronger. Raymond drops it down. Plays it back for Holtz. Swings it across to Bjornfort. Centers for Raymond. Lucas Raymond, who has been all over the puck again this afternoon. Gritzia. Lead pass for Nikolaev. In comes Nikolaev, a centering pass, and the man in front was dumped. And that was Elimov. Now back at the point, that long shot taken by Beachkov. Stuffed by Alnipov. Been a lot of that for the Russians today. A lot of unobstructed shots that were handled easily. Nikolaev. Lead pass to Gritsuk. Takes a return pass from Tavulin. Now the Swedes bring it back. Holtz is back out there. They have a very long shift. Picked up by Beachcock. Up by hand for Leah John. Now on the felt. Leaves it there for Albert Johansson. Gusha. Works it free in the corner. Niazam. Swings it back down to Abramov. And now picked up by Max Valgren. Valgren pulls it free. He got tangled up. And the back skipped away from Soderblom. Now wristed back in by Berselius. Approaching the midway point now, the second or third period rather. Soderblom in. He got leveled there by Mironov. And that shook up Mironov. He wants to get back to the Russian bench. He'll remain in the play for now. Pud Colson plays it around, picked up by Kosmar. Love down by Pud Colson. 
for Amirov. Back for Buck Coles and poking at it. Alma fell down. The puck still loose. Buck Coles it. Swings it back for Vaschenko. His shot was blocked by Soderblom. And that took a bite out of Soderblom. At the point is Vashchenko feeds it across. We run him a hard shot. On the felt makes a save. Amirov. That shot deflects wide. Good pressure now by the Russians. Kosmar trying to clear it. Squeezes that by Vashchenko. But this will be an icing call against the Swedes who won't be able to change. And this is at the end of a very long shift for this group. Ilya Baranov. This is a, a lot of big body. Baranov and Soda Bloom. You're right. Baranov looked like he ended up on the worst side of that. Nikolaev for the face off. He lost it to Kosmar. And now the Swedes will try to move it up the ice and get these guys off. One quick up for Soda Bloom. Swings it across for Valgren, and the Swedes start to change. Valgren. Swings it in deep, scooped up there by Chichikov. And ranging back was Max Baldwin to break that up. Now it's in right, Henriksen gets in the way. Top line back on for the Swedes. Brought in by Christian. Christian throws it towards the goal that was knocked away by Henriksen with a quick stick. Holtz brings it back along with Raymond. Bouncing puck, Holtz was bumped there by Bereno. Nikolai, a long lead pass. Picked up at the line by Grudzik, moves in and shoots at the flex up and out of play. Swedes finally break it open here in period number three, the Broberg goal. Welcome news on the Swedish bench. It was a real great opportunity for Western Hockey League coaches to share some ideas with some high profile people from the hockey world at a seminar held here in Edmonton this week. There you see Mike Babcock, Todd McClellan also on hand. Coaches over recent years, Gord, holding all sorts of these symposiums, a real sharing of ideas happening among the coaching fraternity. Yeah, there's been a lot going on this week. Lots of coaches in town, officials. It's been a great gathering. And of course, not to mention hockey executives and general managers from the NHL here to watch the top under 18 players in the world. And you hosted a luncheon today with a hot stove with Two IIHF president, uh, Rene Fassel. Yeah, so we, had, uh, we had Colin Campbell on with uh, Glenn Gullitson, former NHLer Jason Strudwick, and Ron Robinson, the commissioner of the Western League, to talk about the impact of rules and the differences in the leagues. And we talked to Rene Fassel, who is trying to get NHL players back to the Olympics for 2022, dealing with both the NHL and the International Olympic Committee. And had some pretty strong words for the IOC today. So there's four options. NHL players, the same pool as last time, maybe an under-23 tournament, or no players at all. Is the IHS saying we're not sending players at all? Which would seem like a pretty serious threat. Vashchenko moves in, that was blocked. And it's getting the way with Carl Schoberg. Can the Swedes milk a one-nothing lead here for the last eight and a half minutes of the third period? Spirit on off. Drops it back for Mironov. Back to Puck Colson. He's tied up there by Berselius. Berselius has had the checking assignment on Puck Colson for much of the afternoon when he can. The Russians do have the last change. Puck Colson plays it back to Vashchenko. Lays it back in deep, scooped up there by Johansson. Now Puck Colson centers it and the shot deflected wide. As once again, Philip Broberg's involved the play, gets a stick on that. We talk about his offense, his defense is high level as well. Brought back down by Amiron. Back he goes for Mironov with a shot through the traffic. All the ball made a good save there. And now chipped ahead, Schubert poking at it. That's picked up by Mironov. Up ahead to Alimov. And the puck loose in the corner. Poked ahead by Lundqvist. And back out to center ice. Perena. Pass got by everyone. And back goes Bjorn for icing call against Russia. Puck. 
There's a play, there's a little mark who the best player is on the other team and make sure you be aware of them. On Coles and coming to the net, flipping off, but Dimitri Tyrul and on Lucas Raymond very easily could have been called for a penalty. Chichikov slides that ahead for Alimov. Now Chichikov works in, shoots, and Alimov fights that off. Inside seven to go here in the third period. Bouncing puck in front. And Alimov couldn't get to it. I'm always reminded of what Ken Holland has said for years. He said, you can play the game on the Atlantic Ocean. It's not about the size of the ice. If you can't find a way to get around the net and score and threaten, it doesn't matter. And the Russians have done a real good job of playing outside and not really getting very much inside the Swedish defense. Shot to 11 to four, Russia, here in the third period. Now brought in and fired on goal by Evermont. That's turned away and now Beachcom. Plays it back for Gushin. Lyachov had that poked away. Raymond moves ahead quickly. As the Swedes are changing, in comes Lucas Raymond. Tries his luck on Beachkov. Beachkov stays with him. And now Holtz comes in the fourth check. Henriksen squeezes Gushin off the puck. And now play called at the Swedish line with 5.51 to go in the third period. And Sweden ahead, one nothing in the semifinals of the Holika Gretzky Cup. Free Jesse Gow with the camera on today and the microphone. Let's look and listen in. Fast game. It is. I love the views. Albert Johansson. Flips it down to the Russian zone. And Sidon back with it. At the line, helped by Holtz. Alexander Holtz lost it in turn to Artemi Kanizev. Now the Swedish line, Berselius swings back. So as important as that top line is, we're seeing a lot of Berselius and Soderblom here in a checking role against the Russians and a ton of Broberg, number four, back on defense. Yep. What's well, interesting, too, and you, you talked about Carl Hendricks in the centerman with Holtz and Raymond. I mean, those guys are really gifted offensively, but his center ice play with the puck, without the puck, has been tremendous as well. But Colson got it knocked away there by Ostrom. And now flipped down the ice by Kostbar. Back goes Perinov with it. Inside five to go in the third period. Leaping in is Alimov. Alimov, a backhand shot goes wide. Kostbar. Lost the puck along the boards. Now moved up by Bjorn Ford. Perinov. Up for Alamon, got spun around the center ice by Raymond. Lucas Raymond once again all over the puck. Yeah, he doesn't just wait for it. As you say, he hounds it. Doesn't feel like he's ever more than about 20 feet away from the puck. <laughs> so true. Now fired down in the Swedish zone. Broberg back, icing waved off as Broberg picks it up. Slides it into Raymond. Chips it there for Broberg, racing ahead. Fires that down on goal and forces Askarov to hang on. For a face off of the Russian end, inside four to go in the third. Well, Hugo Anafelt has been very steady in this game. Finding the puck, making sure there's not a lot of rebounds in front of him, keeping that area in front of him tidy, making sure he's getting into position. He's He's been very strong, great economy of movement. So when I talk about the Russians, it's great to have the puck on the outside, but you got to get in there and try to break down a goaltender. Reminds me a little bit of Winnipeg versus Vegas. You get fooled into thinking you're 
in a position to take advantage, but you're, you're never really putting the team on their heels. And what Vegas found out against Washington, it was a whole different animal as they attacked them inside the dots. Beach Goff, up ahead for Gushin. And now Gushin works in. Bumped in the corner by Broberg. And Abramov with it. Back at the point for Tabula. And here's Soderblom. Soderblom comes racing in. That's knocked away. And now swinging back to pick it up is Leachov. Yaroslav Leachov heading for Gatineau in the Quebec League this year. Steams in across the line. Under three to go. And Leachov fires that wide. And swinging back is Kniazev. Run in now by Amirov. Being watched there by Bjorn Ford. The centering pass was blocked by, once again, Lucas Raymond. Thanks down to the Russian zone. Swinging back is Sidon. As Waldron, that was Yul Waldron, closed on him. Spirit on off. Trying the Swedish line, flips out ahead. Bouncing puck swept away by Olafel. The old Walgren up ahead for Raymond. Lucas Raymond has time. Henriksen tapping for it. He put that wide. And now Holtz races in. Plays it back in the corner for Raymond. And Pud Colson has it back for the Russians. Pud Colson bursts in. Get the back edge. That scores. What a dash by Vasily Pud Colson. And the Russians have tied the game with 1.54 to go in the third period. Yeah, there's a little glimpse of this alley. Fun goals and skill, determination, desire to make a difference in the game. He just decides he's going to take matters into his own hands. And here he comes right at you, and right at the Swedish defenders. And the quick move inside, and he stays right with it as he's going to the ice. And NFL takes the worst of it. But the way he keeps the puck free in his hands, that awareness. What a terrific goal by Vasily Podkolzin. So it took the Russians better than 58 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> he scared that assistant coach. <laughs> Vladimir Filatov pretty excited. And Podkolzin, the 17 year old from Podols, with a dash. So a goal in every game for Podkolzin. That's his fifth in the tournament. And 1-1 one, one is your score. Now brought in that shot fired high and wide by Nikolaya. That was probably the best scoring chance the Russians have had in the game. <laughs> well, I'm right down the middle of the ice. I mean, he picks it up from just above his goal line in the defensive zone. And he was going. And, you know, he's got a great change of pace. And, you know, when you combine that with really smart sense and awareness of the game and good hands, Defenders have a tough time gauging because he's speeding up and slowing down. By the way, should overtime be required? It's 10 minutes of four on four for the medal round, or this portion of the medal round anyway. Here in the IHF rules. And then if still tied, there would be a shootout. Lead pass goes to Amira. Now Amira works in, shoots, and all the belt knocks that away. The 30. Second shot of the game found the back of the net for the Russians. At the point is Vezchenko, fires that wide. Amirov with it. Final minute now, the third period. Puck Colson spins and shoots. It goes off a leg, picked up by Raymond. Lucas Raymond tries his luck on Mironov, who stays with him. Now Raymond swings it rink wide to Henriksen. Works it in, shoots, and the goal post scores! with 44 seconds left in the period has restored the Swedish lead. And you see a scar off his stick and his blocker glove ends up, but again, there's Lucas Raymond on the puck, making a play, holding it, the ability to delay, whips it over to Henriksen, and you can see where it beats him, right on the inside of the post. Post, back, and in. And 
Lucas Raymond, though, again in the middle of it. Lucas Raymond, there it is, there's the view. Post. Just enough room to. So Henriksen, that top line, gets it done again. Henriksen's got his second of the Lincoln tournament. 17 year old who plays in the Prolunda system. <laughs> Lucas Raymond, the puck gets swept off his stick, and then he stay he's so good at staying with the puck and staying with the play. And Henrik Henriksen opens himself up perfectly to receive the pass. And you know, Lucas Raymond's gonna be able to find it. And as he goes here, he makes a little move, a little bit off his stick, but he turns quick on Moranoff, and then Henriksen opens himself up and a really good play. And obviously one that Askarov would like that. A minute and 10 seconds after the Russians tied it, Sweden regains the lead. The Russians don't have possession yet, so Askarov remains in the goal. Now the Russians moving out, or the Swedes now are moving out. Holtz winds it and shoots, but that wide. But Coles it. Drops it back for Kniazev. And Kniazev sweeps it in. The goalie's not leaving. Making his way now, but the Swedes had possession. Now gathered up by Alimov. Ten seconds to go in the third period. A great defensive play at the line by Berselius. And that scrambled it long enough to get an offside. At the Swedish line, seven and a half seconds to go in the third period. Well, Pod goals. Pod Coles and makes a great rush from his own zone. Just a fantastic individual effort to tie the game. And a minute and 10 seconds, Lucas Raymond. See, told you everybody would love Raymond. Okay, that's two. <laughs> you know what happens with three strikes, right? <laughs> Russian net is empty. Win the face-off back to Kniazev. Shot pinballs around in front, fired wide. Still loose in front. Is just missing there with Chinikov. And the Swedes make it stand up. All three goals scored in the third period. They lead 1-0. The Russians tie it late. And the Swedes get the go-ahead goal from Carl Henriksen. With 44 seconds remaining, they're going to the gold medal game tomorrow night. Well, it, it, it's fascinating. When we started off at the beginning of this game, we talked about three players. We talked about Podgolzin for Russia, Raymond and Broberg for Sweden, and they were key figures in this game. But, you know, when it seemed like it was headed for overtime, just a great rush by Lucas Raymond and Henriksen, who's done so much work in supporting those two young winners, gets the winning goal. So the Swedes are on to the gold medal game. They'll await the winner of the Canada-USA semifinal in a tough, tough loss for the Russians. They'll play in the bronze medal game tomorrow afternoon. And that's just the appetizer. Can't wait for Canada and the United States coming up later tonight at the 2018 Holinka Cup, powered by Ram. The 2018 Holinka Gretzky Cup from Edmonton and Red Deer, Alberta is brought to you by Esso. The Esso brand has fueled Canada's love of hockey for over 30 years. By Nike, official gear of Canada's national hockey team. And by TELUS. Stand with TELUS to bring good sportsmanship online. Together, we can end bullying. It is elation for Team Sweden. Carl Henriksen with a clutch goal, 44 seconds left, gives them the win. Devastation for Team Russia, who came oh so close to a chance to play for a gold medal. Well, that's the way she goes in international hockey. So Sweden moving on. They'll take on the winners of the United States and Canada. The other semifinal set to go tonight. Canada taking top spot in Pool A. 9 o'clock Eastern time, 6 o'clock Pacific time. You can catch all the action on TSN2. Well, it was down to the final four here on semi-final Friday. Now one 
participants in the gold medal final is set. It'll be Team Sweden. They lost a heartbreaker to Canada a couple of days ago, but on this day, a much different result. Sweden looking to pick up their first gold medal at this event since 2007. Join us tonight for the other semifinal, Canada-USA tonight.